All these improvements in design are reducing shock stall troubles in the difficult earlier part of the transonic range. Still faster flying is only possible when wave drag can be reduced. The drag caused by the shock waves changing kinetic energy into heat. A new design principle helps to do this. Area rule. Consider this aircraft. Take a section through it at right angles to its axis. So. Represent the cross section on a graph. Do this at points all along the axis. The resulting curve is irregular. Let us redesign the aircraft to smooth out the bumps in the curve so that the cross-section area changes gradually and not abruptly. So instead of the curve with bumps, a much smoother curve is obtained. This means the fuselage must have a waist to compensate for the wings and must flare out again behind. Above Mark 1, the bow wave adds its own drag. This can be reduced by having leading edges, nose, sharp rather than rounded. Compare the effect on the bow wave of sharp and rounded leading edges. In these ways, designers are gradually solving the problems of transonic flight and building aircraft that are safe at high and low speeds. Many aircraft have already mastered the shock stall and don't suffer from it at all. Others, which for many years to come will be flying transonically around Mark I, are doing so with greatly reduced shock stall effects. Soon, still greater thrust will be available from after-burning jets, ram jets, and rocket motors. <laughs> Aircraft whose job it is to fly as fast as possible will be able to pass easily through the transonic range into the steadier and more predictable range of fully supersonic flight.